it has been a kind of secret that patients who develop uh, lung embolism or have blood clots in their legs at some time in their life um, can go on and develop from those blood clots, uh, blood clots in the lung. And when blood clots occur in the lung, they go one or two ways. They either just disappear because the body digests the clot, or if there's enough clot material in the lung, the clot material reacts to the blood vessels in the lung and actually causes those blood vessels to close off forever. If you have enough of that process in the lung, the blood simply can't get through the lung any longer. And that causes the lung blood to back up into the heart and cause what we call congestive heart failure. And it's a particular form of congestive heart failure where the tummy will swell and the legs will swell and there'll be a lot of shortness of breath and inability to do much work. Uh, just getting out of bed uh, makes patients very short of breath. Fortunately, uh, a number of years ago, now probably 20, uh, an operation was in essence invented to try to treat patients with these disappearing lung arteries. Uh, and the operation is a little bit like peeling an onion. The lung arteries have a number of layers. And one of the layers after the embolus occurs is basically taken up by clot. And the doctors who are trained in this operation are trained to find just the precise right layer and make a small incision into the artery and then follow that space all the way out into the lung periphery and then remove like a cast all of the material that uh, basically is obstructing that artery. The delicate part of the operation, however, is not making uh, a hole in the artery while you're removing just the cast. And uh, it is an operation that is rarely performed except outside of Southern California where a particular institution has done a great job in demonstrating not only that it can be done regularly, but also can be done with a, a quality of life afterwards, which is enviable. In the past, patients with this problem were basically transplants for, uh, were candidates for transplants, or um, just had to live with their heart failure. The University of Maryland is one of the few centers on the East Coast that performs this operation. And uh, fortunately, I've had an opportunity really since the mid-90s to perform this, this surgery, not only at Maryland, but back in the at the University of Pittsburgh. And my interest in the operation really followed my interest in lung transplantation. We found a number of candidates who had come referred for lung transplant for whom we felt perhaps we could save their lungs. Saving somebody's lungs is certainly a better option than removing them. So in spite of what was then a risk of maybe 20% of death with this operation, uh, a number of patients preferred that to the lung transplant operation. Now in time, we've been able to cut the risk of this pulmonary thromboendarterectomy down to below 10%. And uh, fortunately, in my own experience, uh, uh, we have not lost a patient uh, to date, and hopefully never will. But um, uh, we have had patients in the last few years at the University of Maryland who were referred to us literally bound to bed, some of them on the breathing machine, who now are out uh, with a kind of life that all of us would love to enjoy. And uh, we, we find the operation when it is um, properly performed and properly indicated to be really a life changer. And uh, I was excited about uh, the emerging lung hypertension program here at the University of Maryland because many patients are referred for treatment of lung pressures that are too elevated, uh, who we find almost secondarily to have had that problem because they had multiple blood clots that were never diagnosed. And so in this large number of patients who are coming to the University of Maryland for treatment of their lung hypertension or high pressure, we find a group of patients within that who actually we can treat for cure with a, an operation. The nice thing is, uh, as best I can tell, it's rarely performed anywhere near us on the East Coast with any regularity. And um, 
many patients are referred to the West Coast, which is certainly fine, but, you know, if you can stay at home, why not? Right. And uh, we always give patients options, but uh, many, many prefer to stay in this environment, as I would. It's a difficult and somewhat subtle diagnosis. Oftentimes, we can make the diagnosis simply by looking at the CT scan, uh, which, is an op which is a diagnostic uh, that's available in all major op hospitals and even emergency rooms. Um, we also do tests that include magnetic resonance, MRI, and occasionally we'll even put contrast agent and do an angiogram into the lung arteries. But I would say this day and age, 9 out of 10 patients are diagnosed because of suspicion, a history of having had a bad clot in their legs or having had in the past a known episode where they had a lung embolism. Uh, so that is probably the number one indication for looking if you have that history. Uh, or we just sense that there may be something abnormal about the way the lung looks and in, in our interpretation of the x-rays, we'll then get the CT scan uh, to follow up. It is something we screen for now, so it would be pretty hard to miss in our program. Uh, whether or not it would be easily diagnosed in the periphery is, is really uncertain. Certainly we have people that are well diagnosed who are referred to us with the diagnosis and we have others who are just diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension for whom now we have to we have to be the sleuths, we have to be the medical uh, sleuths and, and figure it out. Well, I think it's wonderful that we can do it here but I think it's the, the big message for our, our internet traffic or our internet um, uh, site is hey this is way way under diagnosed and it would be really sad to see somebody die from hypertension of their lung without at least a really good consultative uh, diagnostic review at a center who not only takes care of pulmonary hypertension but also has existing on-site experience with pulmonary thromboid it's a, it's a It's a bad news, good news deal. If you have um, lungs that are filled with blood clot, oftentimes you can do well for a long time. And uh, part of the art in medicine is deciding when a patient with known blood clots in their lungs is a candidate to truly benefit from pulmonary thromboendorterectomy and when maybe is it too early. Um, clearly you can be too late as well because if the heart should fail terribly, um, there would be circumstances where a patient could be too sick or too ill to benefit from a, uh, a properly timed pulmonary thromboid endarterectomy.